Hey there everybody, it's Mark Curley. I'm back with another video. This is part two of a two-part uh, series in which I'm doing a read-through of this uh, children's picture book that I uh, wrote and illustrated, or translated and illustrated, I, I should say, uh, years ago when I was sort of um, still an unpublished uh, aspiring uh, author. And uh, what I did last time is read all the way through the first half of the story about Momotaro, uh, Peach Boy, as some people will translate uh, that name. And uh, uh, toward the end of the last reading, uh, Peach Boy Momotaro uh, heard about these evil ogres uh, that had been uh, kidnapping children and uh, looting the countryside, heard from this uh, mystical crow who told him this information. And uh, the very last thing that I read uh, was uh, uh, Momotaro saying goodbye to his adoptive uh, grandma and grandpa uh, and heading off uh, to do battle with those uh, ogres. So let's go ahead and move on, uh, starting with the middle of the story and reading all the way through to the end. As Momotaro was traveling, he came across a dog who had no master. Momotaro! Momotaro! The dog said to him, I'm so hungry. Uh, could you give me something to eat? Uh, if you do, I will follow you wherever you go. Momotaro gave him one of his dumplings, and the two of them continued along the road together. So this is the sort of text portion, and with each one of the text pages, I uh, did a full illustration. Uh, so here you see my interpretation of that part of the story. Um, kind of interesting, it seems like I used a dried out brush here with just a little bit of um, gray paint in it to add a little texture to the um, illustration. But I guess I was conscious of trying to match the, uh, the two parts, you know, so I added these little uh, red leaves, um, Japanese maple leaves to, uh, to kind of pull these two different uh, pages together. Well, let's keep going on to the next page. Soon they came upon a monkey and a pheasant. Momotaro told them about the ogres living on the island. They're nothing more than a bunch of thieves and kidnappers, he said, and we're going out there to fight them. That sounds dangerous, said the monkey to the pheasant. We should go with them and help. Momotaro gave them each a dumpling, and the four of them continued along the road toward the sea. Now, I'm pretty sure what I did here is condensed uh, the story a little bit. There probably uh, is supposed to be, you know, a sequence of the three animals, one at a time, each getting their own scene. But I, <laughs> I must have thought, this is getting a little repetitive. Let's just have the pheasant and the monkey uh, on the same page uh, agree to join Momotaro for his quest. Um, and uh, sort of interesting that I decided to add these birch trees. I don't know if that's accurate to the story to have them that far north. Who knows? It's a fairy tale. I guess I can take liberties with that if I want to. But uh, let's move on to the next part of the story. When they reached the sea, they found a boat and set off across the sea. I uh, don't think I would have had the <laughs> repetition of the word sea. <laughs> Needed a little bit of editing, I, I gotta say. Um... The waves tossed them about, but Momotaro was not afraid. At last they saw the island of the ogres, towering in the distance. That's it, cried Momotaro. We're almost there. It was a dark, gloomy island. At the top stood the fortress of the ogres. Uh, and here's my illustration of that sort of sea uh, crossing. Uh, I gotta say, I'm not so proud of this particular illustration. I guess the most interesting thing was that I tried to get uh, a hokusai uh, reference to Hokusai's uh, wave uh, into the illustration, but I, but I sort of like erased something away here. Um, I guess it shows you that uh, I was starting to maybe uh, lose discipline on this project and wasn't putting in as much time on this particular illustration as I did uh, with uh, earlier pages. But, uh, you know, I was just beginning, I was practicing and uh, learning my craft. So let's move on to the next page. Soon they reached the front gate. The monkey climbed over the top and opened it from the inside. Wait, said the pheasant. I'll fly up and have a look in one of the windows. The pheasant returned, explaining that the ogres were in the middle of a great feast, gobbling up all the food they'd stolen from the villages. Now's our chance to catch them by surprise, 
cried Momotaro. Now, I can't guarantee that some of this stuff is in the original story. I think I really did start to uh, take liberties with uh, turning it into an action-adventure story. I gotta give the monkey something to do. I'll give the pheasants a little moment to contribute. Uh, not sure. The, some of you out there might know the Momotaro story, the original. Uh, you can tell me if I was accurate uh, in, or just making things up at that stage. This one, I think, may be even worse than the previous illustration. Not a lot to recommend uh, about it, but um, again, that's, you know, it made me realize that um, children's picture books are harder to do than you think, and that uh, every illustration really needs to be top-notch, and you, you got to be careful that you don't start to, you know, lose gas as you go along. All right, let's continue to the next page. When they reached the room where the ogres were having their feast, Momotaro led the way. Jumping up onto the table, he ran right up to the biggest, ugliest ogre in the room and laid into him with all his might. The dog followed, biting and clawing at the ogre's fingers. Next came the monkey and the pheasant, scratching and pecking at his face. Not so sure about this sword. Looks more like a European sword. Come on, Krilly. Do your research. Should have had a Japanese sword there for Momotaro. I think I started to revive a little bit, uh, and uh, I would say that this is um, this illustration is better than those last two. Maybe a little more uh, up to the standards that I set uh, in the first half of the book. So yeah, I'm, I'm kind of pleased with that. You can tell I really was trying to turn it into a big Hollywood movie, and just for scale, you know, you can see the size of the fish and the rice and pumpkins. I guess those are. Uh, to show you just how huge these ogres are, in my interpretation. All right, we're getting closer to the end. Let's keep going. Before long, the big ogre was flat on his back, with tears running down his face. I'm no match for you, he cried. I give up. Don't hurt me anymore. Uh, the other ogres looked on in horror, for Momotaro had defeated their leader. Don't just stand there, Momotaro shouted. Go release all those children. There's a lot of work to be done. Uh, and here we see this next illustration. This one also, I think, I, I can see I put more time into it. And uh, I'm, I'm fairly pleased with how this one turned out. I, I'm, I'm impressed that I took the time to figure out what a pheasant looks like. I must have found reference for that. Uh, in those days, not by way of the internet, it would have been going to a local library or something to figure out uh, the uh, feathering, you know, the colors of the feathers. Uh, and look at these gigantic <laughs> teardrops rolling down the face. Uh, the monkey looks very pleased with how things have turned out. We only have one more page to go, so let's get on to it. And so the children were all set free, and Momotaro made the ogres promise that they would never do anything bad again. <laughs> Uh, you gotta get a promise out of those ogres. Uh, Momotaro, the dog, the monkey, and the pheasant returned together to the home of the old man and the old woman, and they all lived happily ever after. The end. Now, one thing that I did uh, with this story is I kind of removed the idea of getting all the treasure from the story. Um, traditionally, uh, one of the big things about it is that he recovers all the treasure. And uh, I suppose I just thought, oh no, we're going to make this all about the money? <laughs> so, that doesn't seem right, so I really made a big change there and had it all focused on the kidnapping, uh, setting the children free. Incidentally, we never see any children uh, in the story. I think that's a flaw in my illustration uh, approach. Uh, but in any case, um, I certainly learned as I worked on this project years ago uh, how much effort it takes to do a good children's picture book. And I actually did a second one, a sort of an ABC book. And I'm going to save that uh, for another uh, couple videos uh, in the future, take you through that entire project. Once again, all on spec. I was never paid to do it. I was just practicing honing my craft. And I advise uh, those of you out there who are aspiring to get published someday, challenge yourself to create projects like this. Don't wait until you've got uh, a job to do it. Just assign yourself the job. Get it done. It'll be good practice for you. It's something you can show people, uh, and it may lead you uh, further down the road towards landing that job that you want. Uh, so hang on, I'm just going to grab my books so that I can say thank you to anyone who has supported me by getting them, like The Realism Challenge, my book on hyper-realistic uh, illustrations, The Drawing Lesson, a graphic novel that teaches you how to draw, and my very latest book, The Two Pencil 
method, complete with a portrait of my corgi. I should say my daughter's corgi. Belongs more to my daughter than to me. Uh, but let's go ahead and lay down a brush, even though I didn't use a brush <laughs> during this video. Gotta lay something down at the end of one of these videos. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And I'll be back with another one real soon.